Hey, welcome to Designing Adobe XD. I'm your host, Talon Wadsworth. I'm the lead designer of Adobe XD. And I got to say, this is probably one of my favorite uh, guests so we've had so far, mainly because this is my, uh, I think my, fr my, my first and oldest friend in the Bay Area, uh, my good friend, Mr. Sean Cheris, is joining me today. Hey. Hey, Sean. How hey. are you? I'm, I'm doing great. How yeah, are you? good, good. Uh, we'll get to your title in a sec, but I want to say hey to everybody in the chat real quick. Uh, if you guys have questions about Adobe XD, about design here at Adobe, again, Sean and I have been on this crazy journey here together for, you've been here for nine? Just, just about 10 just years. Just about 10 years. Yeah. And actually, Sean is the reason I am here today working at Adobe and have been here for seven years. So he was the, he was the first one in. Uh, and brought a bunch <laughs> of us along with him. Um, so I'm super happy to have him here today. Um, Sean, uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, okay. I'm Sean Cheris. I am uh, a director of uh, experience design as part of Adobe Design's uh, design group. I'm going to just say design a lot. Just design. design. Uh, and my, we're a, a centralized product design team, and uh, my area of responsibility is um, brand and experience. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the brand and all the expressions of it. So the actual brand system, icons, our design language system, content strategy, uh, a few other teams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sean's team is responsible for the XD icon, uh, the splash screens that we all know and love from from Illustrator and Photoshop, uh, and also all the icons, which is crazy. The number of icons that yeah. we have in our products here. It's it's astounding. It's staggering. Yeah, it's staggering. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I'm really excited. We're, today, we're going to talk uh, about a big effort that actually Sean has really been the spearhead of um, at his time here at Adobe um, called Spectrum. Tell us, uh, let's, we're going to, well, actually, hold on a second. I wanted to sort of get <laughs> back to a little bit. Spectrum is is uh, is actually kind of our, actually, I'm going to I'm gonna say that for a second. So, uh, hold on. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. I'm a little out of sorts here. So, we talked a little bit about Adobe Design. Sean and I work as part of Adobe Design, um, and we have designers working on all of our products, and we have a team, Sean's team, that is working on um, basically like all the brand experience of our products across all the all the brands we have, all the all the products, all the big services, the platforms. Yeah, your your customers are our customers, and in some way, my customers are you. Hey, that so it works out pretty well. Yeah, I like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're competing with the World Cup today. Uh, well, that's all right. You can have us both up, I think, right? Um, so yeah, uh, so so <laughs> and if you guys have any questions about design here at Adobe, kind of let us know. Um, so we're here to sort of take your questions. Hey to everybody in the chat. Cody, Mathias, Matthias, Matthias, it's great to see you as always. Abton, how are you guys doing? Dirk, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, all right, so let's let's talk a little bit kind of about your journey here at Adobe so far. And I, I wanted to share this. Here, <laughs> if anyone recognizes this 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 piece, this this lovely gradient piece, yeah, this is one of the first things I did at Adobe. So I came in uh, on the brand team, yeah, as like a junior production contract uh, icon assembler. I mm -hmm. think was mm -hmm. how I described that, and then um, yeah, started doing more and more of the brand work. Uh, actually did this one with uh, with Ryan Hicks, who's part of our team. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first major uh, revision of the CS suite. Uh, I came in right at the end of tail end of CS4. Yeah. And so this was kind it's of a, the, the an extension of that work. Very kind of MC Escher, uh, gradient heavy. Um, yeah, and you selected the one with all the, the Photoshop <laughs> names on it, which of course is like the, the worst use case for designing a splash screen is like having to support of course. Uh, a, a wall of text on the screen. So you um, were designing the icon and the other brand elements inside the apps, and the splash screen is one of those. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, I've always described it as sort of, we, we designed sort of the, the system. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the palette of colors and the sort of like visual construction, uh, the architecture of the brand, and then all the executions of it. So icons, splash screens, um, file type icons, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. banners, installation assets, and the very like long tail of, of, of assets. So, so really all the really visual things, the real visual signifiers of these tools that everybody gets really attached to. Like you're you're like right at that. Yeah, you're like you're, you're touching anything all those that surfaces. sort of smells like brand and in, inside of our product experiences yeah. are things that my team is ultimately responsible for. Yeah. And this was this was probably what the second generation after going away from the 
beautiful illustrations. This well, sort of... no, it went uh, it went CS, which was the initial yeah. like Macrodobe yeah. uh, merger, uh, which was the uh, and then there was uh, that that had the illustrations. That was the okay. That was CS3, before the, the CS3. CS3 yeah. was like rectilinear, you yep. know, very simple color palette, and then CS4 took the bold move of uh, changing the color text from white to black. <laughs> It's, there's a little more to it than that, yeah, but sure, you sure. Know, we just needed yeah, yeah. a visual differentiator. And, you know, really this goes back to, you know, the pre-Creative Cloud days when uh, users would often have multiple versions of our software installed oh, at the oh, same yeah. time. Yeah. And so, you know, visual differentiation, and you know, was was one of the requirements. It wasn't just making it, um, you know, pretty. That's a fun. really that's a really good point, because yeah. I, I kind of forget those days now that we've sort of been in Creative Cloud for a while, that that people would be, you'd run into your colleague and he'd still be working on CS1 and you may have, you know, your studio may have bought the latest and greatest or somebody else was pirating another Yeah, another we were really it. happy to get away from having to, to rethink like the visual architecture of our product marks every yeah, 18 yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was actually, and this was actually one of my favorite and that's why I wanted to do it. This was, this was when you took, you kind of took on, you took over that team, right? Like you would, you would come in mm -hmm. at that junior level and you would kind of taken over kind of management and, and really process of that team. Yeah, that point, and, and, right? and and CS6 here, which is on the right, yeah. also uh, represents a bit of a departure too, where instead of uh, the desktop brand system kind of being its own standalone thing, yeah. we started partnering with our, our friends over in marketing and these these sort of textural splash elements that you see in, in the Photoshop one here are actually taken from artwork that was created for the the box because remember we used to have boxes yeah, yeah. Uh, and the artwork for that box uh, this really talented uh, artist uh, whose name is like, escapes me this one. he did this lovely artwork and then we got his Photoshop file and we sort of took bits and pieces of it and and made the splash screen this one in particular I, I remember the, the file was actually like six or seven hundred layers mm -hmm. and they were all named in Italian. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> I wasn't really to, able to make sense of it, so in the end, I just sort of like uh, on my own recreated the the visual look and feel of like what he used for his illustrations on on my own and, and tried to match them to his style. That's a really that's a really key thing, and I think it speaks to kind of both your mine and yours background, but also to kind of the charter of our design team overall, <laughs> where you know starting to dr to make more connections to tell a bigger system level story yeah. right between all of the places you might interact with adobe yeah cuz it wasn't just used on the box that's yeah. a good point yeah. it was used in you know marketing web banners all sorts of uh, stuff on the website too so you know in your unit user journey of like discovery to to purchase to launch of the application there's a visual through line mm -hmm. that kind of connects all of it mm -hmm. I mean, and talk about sort of making a visual sort of through line. This this really felt like a real watershed moment for your team, where where you really broke through and rationalized, not just the creative cloud. Like this was the <laughs> first time where again where where a user was going to actually be exposed to and have access to all of our digital tools, right? Creative Cloud being the subscription service. But then you took the hard challenge of actually rationalizing the system across all of Adobe, including our Experience Cloud and Acrobat. Yeah, yeah, and this is this is like the really tidy view. Uh, <laughs> Adobe at this point still had like upwards of a hundred products and services that were all like individually branded. Yeah. So we needed, you know. Uh, uh, a visual architecture for the product marks themselves that could be yeah. periodic table. Do yeah, uh, yeah, that she there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we needed something beyond the the, the two letter mnemonics that could that could scale up that big. Yeah. The two letter mnemonics came out of the merger of Macromedia and Adobe, where we went from having a small handful of things yeah. to over a dozen, and. You know, you were referencing the more uh, illustrative style mm -hmm. back in the early days, back in CS. Yeah, like, yeah. the icon for Photoshop was like a feather, and InDesign was like a starfish, and you know, that works for four apps. It doesn't work so well for a dozen. You're yeah. like, oh, what's the, you know, what's the feather? <laughs> you know, I mean, there's just the, like the thing that I've always been impressed by, and why I sort of want to set this up this way is that, you know, again, with your skill set and your, and as you grew your team, you started to really reach out and draw connections across the whole platform and all of Adobe. Yeah, right? well, you know. At Adobe, least from a brand perspective at this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, 
ostensibly all these things are part of Adoki's ecosystem because they have something to do with each other. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we had the bold idea that it should look like it all comes from one company. Yeah. I, I, this, a lot of this stuff is mergers, acquisitions, yeah, all, all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of rationalization. Finding a place to for all the pieces in the system was, was really impressive. Thanks. But, you know, like I think <laughs> in sort of setting that up, like your team, your real charter was really focused on the brand experience of the apps. You know, within the desktop or on the web, where you would interact with those services, and again, like seeing that all together, to me, just like like felt like a big moment uh, to highlight because here's that's that brand system really rationalized for the first time. But here, I'm gonna talk a little bit now about like the 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 UI of the applications, right? Like it really generally pretty unchanged for for the at least the the lifetime of of apps like Photoshop at that point. You know, so this is, again, now you have this really rationalized, this really beautiful system. You have Creative Cloud, you know, uh, users are having now access to everything that we have to offer, really, through kind of one subscription. And and, the, and people just expect these apps to, to work together, but they all worked and looked still a little bit differently. They all had their own quirks to them, right? Yeah, so. yeah. And, you know, it, it wasn't a new idea at the time, but, but I think bringing the brand together mm -hmm. in a unified way, uh, it, you're sort of hinting at it. Like, I think it highlighted again some of the inconsistencies in our experience. Mm -hmm. And so it's around 2013 we started thinking about a long-term plan to start bringing this stuff together. Yeah. And these are really big, really complex tools. You need like a very long roadmap to be able to to, to move the ship mm -hmm. with that many products and services. Yeah, definitely. So. It's very ambitious. <laughs> I, I, Sh Sean's, that's one of the things I admire about Sean is his uh, attention to detail and his ambition. Yeah, one, yeah very, I mean, not only just your design thinking, but, uh, and that's really where now, sort of after setting that up a little bit, I really want you to kind of, again, like being faced with that, you've rationalized the system, you've, you're building this team out. And now, again, you're really looking at the experience of the whole application. Mm -hmm. And as it was about 2013, you started putting together what would become Spectrum. So tell us what tell us about Spectrum a little bit. Kind of like what what is it? Yeah. And what are your goals? What have the goals been since that those early days? Oh, just just that. Well, um, you know. <laughs> so so Spectrum uh, is is the brand name that we put to our design system, uh, and I. I don't think many people were calling that a design system. Not at that in, point, yeah. In, in yeah. that time. Um, and Adobe's brand system yeah. is built on the, the color spectrum as a sort of mm. metaphorical stand-in for the complete uh, range of our offerings. Uh, and so Spectrum was the, the brand name that we adopted for our, our brand experience project, which became our design system. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of covers what we would also start to think about as like a like what we used to think about as style guide, right? Really, in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, ye, ye old style guide. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is this again. This is this was happening in 2013, and about this time, again, I had been working on various products and sort of shipping products. And uh, about that time, actually, I had started to kick up a project that would later become Adobe XD. So again, we're gonna sort of go into this story, and we're gonna tell one and sort of show the other in parallel, kind of a little bit as we go. Uh, but I just want to take a break here and say hi, everybody. Uh, join, thanks for joining us on Adobe XD, uh, designing Adobe XD. Uh, hey, Emil, Arvind. Uh, Dushi had a question for us. Um, you know, Dushi, we might hear the question is like, how, where do we envision Adobe in five, 10 years? We might kind of get to that a little bit later because we're going to sort of see again some of the, some of the kind of like the, the results of a lot of the work that both Sean and, uh, and my team have done uh, here at Adobe. Um, but uh, uh, the future is definitely bright. But I wanted to sort of get back here, and this was, I think, one of the first really compelling things I saw from Sean's team. It really, uh, the first time I, I, we really started talking about this consistent, unified visual language. And I just love this this mm. screen. And this was this is what two thousand was this two thousand thirteen? Yeah, this yeah. was two thousand thirteen. So um, tell us what this is. Um, so this is some work that that my team did. This is actually done with a by a talented designer that was on my team at that time, Phil Liu. Mm -hmm. Phil Liu, if you're out there, thank you. Um, and honestly, this is the kind of work that I'm quick to criticize people mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I'm being honest. Um, sure. There's a lot of like armchair brand design out there, and a lot of armchair uh, app design. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's mostly focused on UI. And yeah. That's great. You know, it's yeah. like working out, just yeah. doing reps. It's not really solving problems, though. It's hard to know 
what are the problems of Photoshop? Mm -hmm. Like I work here and, and I don't even want to get into all that. But we looked at Photoshop and some of the other apps, and I think you have some of the other ones yeah. here too. But the idea was just sort of to look at the desktop apps, which are these really complex tool you know, uh, apps that are some of the most complex things that we make or maybe even anyone makes. Yeah. Um, and to just, from a pure visual perspective, think about you know, a radical reduction in sort of noise and complexity, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in other words, like how much can you keep taking out before it sort of breaks? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's like kind of jumping back here quickly to from <laughs> this, right? Like, and that's what felt so refreshing. Well, yeah. Even though, again, like it is a little bit, yeah. you know, you're what sort of making be, some leaps here. Yeah, or... what could be easier than just drawing a picture of what it's going to be, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, it, it helped for us as an organizing principle mm -hmm. um, just about like how far you can take it down. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think you'll cover some of this. In some cases, products that we're shipping today actually look a lot like this. Yes. And in yes. some cases, um, we're, we're getting there. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, the difference is, is a world of difference between like drawing pictures of stuff and the actual implementation of it. But yeah. um, this this was enough to generate some interest. And it it definitely got me interested. <laughs> and we're gonna show this in a second, but this, the I always, I actually kept these kind of in my back pocket kind of the whole time when I was first sort of designing, again, what would become, you know, a, a XD. And you'll see, and we can kind of call out, actually, again, and, and you mentioned some of the other apps too, how it's actually pretty amazing, I think, and a real testament to the work that your team has done, that a lot of the flavor of these early concepts actually live on today, actually, in the shipping products. Yeah, you know? it, <clears throat> it it's wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, 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 it never it, gets old to see it, it like, it, ship. It doesn't, I know, I mean, seriously. Yeah. It's been, and it's been great to sort of, again, see XD and Spectrum evolve together. There's been some challenges, and we'll talk about that maybe a little later. But, but again, like the essence is there, and seeing these, I think together, again, like they they really were meant to be viewed as a set. And I, I, there are a couple others I left out just for brevity today. But again, I think you know, again, making these all feel like they came from Adobe, and these are all services that that users would recognize that they came into any of the, our applications. Yeah, and I thought this was really successful. And the other thing too here is we were trying to develop a language that would be sort of. Uh, platform agnostic to a degree, right? Like yeah. it would feel at home on the web, on a tablet. Um, here some, we're building out some more complex patterns, just taking all the stuff that we know about and designing it for real using our language yeah. and figuring out where it breaks and where we could approve it. These again, these are element, These are things that I used and referenced uh, early on in XD. And this one, you were kind of referencing this a little bit about the, the platform agnostic. And I sort of pulled this screen when I was gathering some 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 things here because this is really talking about how the the UI could scale across these different platforms because we really were faced with the challenge of designing for you know different platforms, different uh, resolutions, uh, you know. And so talk about this screen a little bit in that context, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think you outlined it pretty well. Um, just thinking about things with different. Uh, grids, different mm -hmm. sizes, how, uh, you know, progressive reduction could happen. Um, really just thinking about, you know, tooling panels, the way we think about web pages to a degree, mm -hmm. um, and how much those concepts could, could blend together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely taking, I think, the uh, inspiration from some of the best examples on those platforms at that time, uh, and really thinking, because, uh, you know, Adobe, we do have a unique problem where we are on all the platforms. Our tools are on Mac and Windows and iPad and Android and the yeah, we, web. We officially support six surfaces. Crazy. I mean, it's, it's a huge challenge for our team. Yeah, and I don't know if you'll go into this too, but one, yeah. of, the, one of the challenges that we faced over time uh, was figuring out um, on each of those surfaces mm -hmm. how much to leverage patterns that were there oh, yeah, yeah, versus, yeah. you know, our own brand voice. Um, and we always, you know, tended to, we almost tend to, to, to lean on the patterns of the platform mm -hmm. where the platform has a strong opinion yeah. and where it doesn't uh, to, to use something that's consistent with our other services. Yeah. Yeah. That's the very high that's, level that's, that's very, uh, No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really great answer. Uh, Abton has a great question, of and course, night with, with Night Mode coming out. Night well, mode. At, as you can see, Spectrum, even at this early stage, was laying the groundwork for both the dark night mode UI of our apps, of course, because a lot of our apps have, have had that, and of course also so we want to support that, but also the light version Yeah, well. we, we actually support uh, four color stops. Uh, yeah. Lightest and light, and darker and darkest. Uh, 
on six platforms. Crazy. So crazy. Oh, look, so, you got the slider. So, so Abton, as soon as we can, yes, XD, I think, would like to. And Sean's team has given us some great tools to help us do that. But yes, go vote on that on user voice, as Matthias has, has added here in the chat. Because uh, it is something that I think uh, Everybody has their own preference, so we gotta we gotta take that into account, right? Yeah, I, I mean, dark mode always looks great. Mode Although I'm I'm great. still trying to figure out if I want it for my whole operating system. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. But we'll, you know, we'll the shock see. at the new. We'll see. Oh, so you're showing the slide. I, I, I really wanted to show this to you because I think, um, hey, Paul, what's up, hey, man? Paul. Paul wants night mode too. All right, then if a pro like Paul, he wants night mode. I keep thinking of know. night man. Night, <laughs> song. night mode. Working on the night shift. Night yeah. mode. Night moves. Uh, yeah. So you're showing the this, slider. This is, I think, speaking to the. The, both the attention sort of to detail that that even in the smallest detail that you're really trying to tell kind of an Adobe brand well, experience story. Yeah, I mean the, the 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 central ethos of of Spectrum is like our stuff is complicated. Let's reduce it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. In fact, the the jokey slogan on the Spectrum team has always been uh, keep taking stuff out till it breaks, then add that last thing back mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's a great so, sort of design maxim in general, like a great principle yeah, for very, design in general. Yeah, it's very Dieter Rahms. Yes, yes. And, and I'm, we kind of felt like, okay, well, our experiences are full of sliders, and if the slider is just going to be a circle on a line, like it's got to be a really great circle really on great. a line, uh, you know. And and uh, I don't know if you're going to show it too, but yeah. the um, our radio buttons follow oh, the yeah, same yeah, pattern where they kind of they kind of uh, go yeah, back and do, forth. Yeah. But um, I mean, I think it also speaks to and something that you know in being faced with, you know, like looking at the old patterns and the old tools and the old sort of paradigms of software. Again, like Photoshop having been generally the same for 20-ish years, you know, when we were sitting down and designing XD, we really thought about how to, you know, take inspiration from some of the patterns we were seeing on mobile and the ways in which UI was becoming much more stateful, right, to, to both sort of conserve space, you know, to be smart about the workflows and the way in which we introduce tools. And so the choreography of all those elements is something that, that you know, we've really been thinking about. Um, and I think it shows in these kind of details as can, well. Can I tell you, when we had a, a build of this control, yeah. like when we were tuning yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I'd I just sit in meetings for like a year, just like <laughs> moving sliders around <laughs> and being like, you know, maybe like five milliseconds less on that one. See, we're sweating the details here. We really do, like like that's what's, yeah, I, 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 I love it. We're all And it, speaking of details here too, as well, again, there was a whole, I mean, I don't want to. I really wanted to highlight the effort of the of the the icon team going from yeah these pics these really sort of like illustrated tiny paintings tiny paintings yes that's what we call them to something again that that was rationalized that could actually with with sort of stand on their own across all the different platforms yeah. across all the different screen tools. density was like doubling every year yeah. during this so it's we were crazy. just trying to make something that would scale on its own but like fall back on older displays and not look completely a mess yeah. so. Yeah. Huge props to that team, and this is just showing some of the, yeah, some of the storytelling different, different going styles on that level. of icons that we rationalized as well. Yeah. So you know, moving along here, I was also wanted to sort of again showcase again so, so where the journey that was going on in parallel to Spectrum really was the journey of, of designing and developing XD as a tool. Um, so again, this was kind of the context in which you know we started to to generate designs for XD, and Sean's team was undertaking their work on Spectrum. And uh, I wanted to show sort of the first <laughs> UI ever designed for XD. And I think I've probably shown this before a variety of times, but it never gets old because it really was a reduction and really a response to the complexity from a user perspective, yeah. like sort of reducing it down to some key, some core elements. I feel like there was a lot of this conversation where people would say, this looks a lot like a tablet app. And you'd be like, <laughs> right? <laughs> there you right? go. Doesn't there you it? Go. Yeah, 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 I know. Ooh, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, uh, uh, Dushy update coming very soon. So m great stuff on tap. I just wanted to sort of mention that. Um, yeah, so this was one of those early concepts. And again, like I think Sean's team was really just kind of getting up and going with these things. And I, I hadn't really been exposed to them yet. And so, but we kept, of course, iterating and adding in new features. But again, you start seeing some, some similarities, some same concepts sort of come in. You've got the sort of panel switcher here on the right-hand side. And I was going with this very headerless sort of UI at this time. Um, everything was very contextual, very HUD-like, mm -hmm. um, where you know the tool wasn't taking up visual space in, until you needed it. That was a lot of our thinking at this time. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, 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 jumped over that one. Wow, just sort of bloop. Oh, okay, something went oh, wrong with the deck. Is. 
That's oh, fine. I think it's fine. But this again, this started showing. I think I think here and on that last one, you, uh, what I was trying to illustrate was you started seeing some of those concepts and really drawing this to some of those early concepts of the spectrum work. Yeah. How far along was this? Because it doesn't look it, that different. This from was me. this was when we were almost ready to. I think this was before. This is still a few months before we projects. released the, the beta. This is still yeah. Project Sparkler. It was known at the time. Um, and but we were getting closer to I, I think and we had really solidified kind of the overall app frame. And again, you can see with some of these elements here, like the modes yeah. um, and the, the the panel switcher and the toolbar. Again, like we've come now, we kind of came all the way back around, and again, we're really inspired by the work that the team was doing and picked on, and sort of ended up adopting a lot of those uh, in our work. Um, so. You know, really, again, the, the story is probably not done, and I think it's maybe early to, to congratulate ourselves too much. <laughs> but, like, man, like, seeing this again, like, and seeing the things that came through from those early concepts here, and this is shipping Lightroom today. This is actually, yeah. I just grabbed a screenshot of Lightroom today on my desktop. And this team has done an amazing job, and I think really springboarded off the work your team has done to create a, a great experience. Yeah, this one started a little bit later than XD, so yeah. they were able to leverage the latest of it uh, at, at the time. Yeah, and if you do a side by side with this and those original like pie in the sky, you know, explorations, like they're they're pretty, pretty similar. They're pretty close. They're yeah, pretty we learned a lot. Close. Obviously, the implementation yeah. you learn a lot from it, and all that came back into the language. Yeah. But side by side, they're you know, yeah, like there's there's your sliders. There's, there's the, the sliders. sliders. There's the sliders. It's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I um, a whole stack of them. And and actually, just to touch on it, you guys will start to see. Uh, a little bit different look and feel for this these new generation of tools, even in the branding. You're starting to see something that, again, the, with the rounded corners, and you'll start to see more of those family come out. Uh, and again, those are the ones that really are now kind of spectrum natives, really. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> and work, uh, in many cases, across different, across platforms, the different platforms. And, and yeah. you know, truth in the cloud and sort of all those mm -hmm. modern ideas about software development. Yeah. And there's XD. There's XD today. And uh, we're gonna go hop in there real quick in, in just a second. But yeah, I mean, again, yeah, I think we still have a long way to go. Again, XD has actually uh, been in development through multiple versions and updates of Spectrum. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting sort of challenge that we have is that the design language keeps evolving and, and updating as, as, as the tool's needs grow, right, across all these different platforms. And so, um, again, like, while there may be some differences, but again, like, I think overall Lightroom uh, XD, Dimension, these new, new generation of applications all really feel like they're speaking with that one Adobe voice. Yeah, yeah and I think fast forwarding a few years into the future, I think we'll have some strategies for keeping those properties a little bit more in sync. Yeah. I, even the work, again, not to let leave them out, but even the work here, you'll see the spectrum work inside of, uh, of Illustrator and Photoshop. Oh man, this is like the, the trippiest, most Inception thing ever. <laughs> yes. this, is, this is working on the sticker sheet for the framework that Illustrator <laughs> uses in a beta version of Illustrator that was implementing the framework. This is, this is, kind, of, this is kind of our daily life here. Yeah, it got really confusing at yeah, times. It, like, am uh, I looking at a real bit of UI or just the canvas? I, and then all the <laughs> colors are the same. It's, uh, it's very Inception. And just to go again a little bit more, you know, again, like here is the latest, again, the Spectrum team is actually designing all of the components inside of XD and all of the new next generation of tools and, and Photoshop and Illustrator are all now designed in XD as well. It's true. Which is uh, one of my, I just, that, that just makes me feel. Yeah, and this gets kind great. of uh, uncanny valley oh, too yeah. where oh, yeah. like all the colors are the same and. <laughs> so get the, get your spectrum with your spectrum and your spectrum. Yo dog. Here, yeah. <laughs> and you know, Sean's team, I mean, he's just developed a great team. And again, they, this is really exhaustive. So this is our kind of like working the files that we use as a design team to actually pull from in designing the XD UI. So here's the slider component. Uh, and then here is our sort of like master app frame Whoa. that we use. Again, this sort of very Inception-like <laughs> thing. And it, all we'll do is really just copy and paste kind of between those to sort of nail this um, to kind of you know, make sure that we're starting from the from the from the right place. So we're always sort of using Spectrum to build all of our new features. You know, it's really amazing. Uh, and kind of the last thing, I just wanted to highlight this really amazing resource that Sean's team has created. And this might maybe hopefully give people some inspiration who might be out there designing their own design system now. Um, this is the Spectrum site. This is our internal site. Yeah, that go the to the Spectrum team. Page. Yeah, let's go to the sliders. Let's go just to... So here I can browse to and actually see all of these components actually in action. Oh, this one's not. 
That one's... We're in a transition stage. Oh, there's... <laughs> just a couple of these yeah, elements. I picked oh, those, a bad one. Yes, that was a bad... Uh, let's see. So, let's go to the button, the button one, of course. The radio button works. Oh, no, no. No, we're... we're, 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 yeah. we, we're, we're these a, ones are being be updated. Yeah. But I can actually kind of see, like, d designers uh -huh. and developers. This is kind of a, a, a place, a resource where both come together yeah. to really see the patterns, see the spectrum components working... It's got implementation details here, mm -hmm. um, the CSS, and then, uh, yeah, you can see all the different states. And if you actually, on the left here, you can change the, the type, too. To a primary so, button, yeah. secondary. So I'll tell you a fun fact about Spectrum. Yeah, yeah. So we support uh, six platforms. We have four supported uh, color themes. Um, and then if you, if you just think about button as mm -hmm. an example, right? Um, there are 1,080 implementations of button. Wow. That, yeah. So that's, that's all That's all the states, yeah. that's all the types mm -hmm. across all six platforms and all four colors. There's mm -hmm. 1,080 of those, wow. and they're all tested and accessible and known to be implemented, and uh, we have actual built components for most of those. And and your team now includes accessibility, right? And, yeah. And, uh, and, um, Adobe's, yep. uh, Adobe Design's head of inclusive design is mm -hmm. part of my team. Yep. So uh, usability, accessibility, uh, all that stuff is, is built in as much as we can on the component level. And there's guidelines on this site too yeah. for inclusive design that's, as well. I mean, you know, again, like I, it was a pleasure to sort of bring you here and sort of, I mean, because the, the work that I think you've spearheaded and the team that you've built Again, I think it really enables me as a designer here at Adobe, you know, to create, you know, great, a great product in XD, and and to know that like I've got this amazing team and these amazing resources with my back. Where again, if I'm as I'm using these components, I know that they're they're ready for accessibility. Uh, you know, they're they're ready for again um, for usability kind of across all these platforms. Uh, it just makes just takes a lot off my shoulders and makes my job that much easier. That's well, that's why you're my customer. So there you go. So. Uh, you know, thank you guys for joining us. I know this we kind of didn't take as many questions today, but sometimes again we we have we have a lot of stuff to talk about, oh, and we just want to share again some of the insights and some of our journey. Um, I could do this for hours. I know, seriously. We just like so. You guys want to again? If you have any questions for us and we didn't get to them today, hit us up on Twitter uh, at Mr. Talon and at Shantaraj. Shantaraj. Uh, we're always happy to to answer questions, to share resources, or, or give uh, you know feedback. Uh, so let us know. Thanks for joining us in the chat, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks.